Welcome back everyone. It's another beautiful day to be talking about the film club. I'm your host Carson Higgins. This is a, our dear friend Groot. You know him. I know him. We all know him. We love him, don't we? He's got great hair. Um, you guys, we watched such a good movie this week and I know that you haven't seen it. How weird is that? <laughs> uh, we watched... Dude, I don't even know how to begin talking about this movie with you. I'll just start at the beginning. So if you're watching this, you know, maybe way in the future, it is February 2021 and we have been celebrating Black History Month in Film Club and we've pretty much spent our, our, our movie watching time watching films from the continent of Africa. Uh, we watched a great film last week, Yilin, um, which is a, a Malian film. And I wanted to just like kind of find something it was from Africa. I wanted to find something that was maybe, if not lighthearted, then, then something that, I don't know, was a little more universal or something. And I stumbled upon this movie, Supamoto. It's from 2018. It's from Kenya. And if you have the Criterion channel, maybe you're familiar with the Saturday matinees, which are kind of like their family-friendly films, I guess. Um, the things that they, they think are, you know, suitable for children to watch and so I was like yeah look at this it's it's an hour and 14 minutes long I looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes it had 90% on Rotten Tomatoes I was like yeah this it's about a little girl who wants to be a superhero I was like that sounds like a blast it was but I'm just gonna tell you right now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you a single like plot thing in this movie because I know you haven't seen it and how do I know you haven't seen it because I, I watched this movie and I watched it with my mom and my girlfriend and we all we all loved it. We couldn't believe that we hadn't heard of this movie before. And I went to go look it up. You know, I, I like to look up these things on, on Letterboxd or on IMDb. And let me just tell you, there are only 310 ratings on IMDb for this film. And only 592 people have seen this movie on Letterboxd. Now, that's not like hard data. <laughs> but... There are some other pretty like random movies that, you know, you can bring up and nobody in the room knows what you're talking about that have like at least a thousand ratings on IMDb. This is 310. So let's just just real quick. Um, this film is directed and uh, written by it's written by a couple people, but it was story by and directed by this dude. Lycarian or like Orion or like I'm just I'm gonna put the words up right here so you can see it. Uh, I'm gonna try this. Lycarian Wainaina. This is a he was born in Moscow, moved he's Kenyan, uh, and he he lives in Kenya and he he makes he makes movies now. And boy does he! <laughs> this dude made one of the best movies I've ever seen, just like flat out. And the thing that is the coolest part is it's it's. I've never seen a film be able to be as effective as it was while being so damn short. This movie's an hour and 15 minutes long. It's like the shortest feature length film you're ever going to see. Uh, but you're going to smile. You're going to laugh. You're going to cry. And you're going to be better for seeing this film. Like if I could just prescribe a movie to you, it would be Supermoto. You need you need to witness this movie. It The thing that blows my mind is like, I'm seeing that not very people, very many people have like seen it on Letterboxd or rated it on IMDb, but it is the most award-winning film from Kenya ever. It, it's won like 40 awards and it was the official Kenyan selection for the 2019 Oscars uh, for, for best foreign language film. It did not wind up getting nominated, um, but the fact that it was able to, that, that Kenya was able to have a film that they were like, we have an official selection. Uh, that's cool. And the, the other thing that's worth noting is there's a film called Rafiki. I have not watched it myself. I've been meaning to, and it was on the Criterion channel. I don't know if it still is. Uh, also a Kenyan film, also from the same year. And, and Supermoto and Rafiki were kind of like duking it out in a way for this official selection slot, which should tell you one thing. The Kenyan film industry and African cinema at large is in its infancy and it's so good already you guys i know i sound like an asshole it's like dude we've been making movies in africa this whole time and just because you found it now you're excited yes i am very excited 
Because the thing that is special, right? It's like the, the African films that most of us in Western culture have seen are typically like by European or Western filmmakers, storytellers, screenwriters, and they typically have a European or white lead or just like very integral role to like why the story is happening. You know, it's like lady moved here with her husband and he died and now she's in Africa trying to deal with being in Africa. And the nice thing about watching this film or even like the film we watched last week, Yilin, um, or this movie Tuki Buki from Senegal that I can't shut up about. I love this movie. Uh, all of these films are like made by and for African people. What a concept, right? Uh, the other thing that's just really great in watching Supermoto is uh, you get to see the family in their house. You get to see them like at the market, at school, at the hospital. And guess what, folks? I know you knew this, but they ain't living in huts. They got fucking houses. They got jobs. They got nice clothes. They go to the movies. These are fucking people that you could definitely relate to. And you don't even need to relate to them. You just need to watch them. Just witness this this stuff. They are making marvelous art over there. And this dude, Lacarian Wanina, dude, thank you. Thank you for making this movie. There's no there's no reason why you should have worked as hard as you did. I know that you broke your back making this movie. It could not have been easy. There's no way that it was easy to secure funding for a film that was going to be made in Kenya about a terminally ill girl who wants to be a superhero. I'm sure that was difficult. And dude, I'm just so, so thankful from this Californian asshole who just loves watching cinema and who has like recently wanted to experience as much African cinema as possible. Thank you so much, man. You made one of the best movies I've ever watched in my life. And I, I dedicate my life to watching movies, it seems. Um, so yeah, man, like I know that you had to fly all over the world. You got, you got to. But you had to, to to make sure this movie got seen by as many people as possible. And, dude, I can't wait to see what you make. So, yeah, I, I was just talking to the director, if you're not the director. <laughs> uh, I'm also a huge fan. Here's the trouble, man. I don't want to be that clunky white guy, but, like, I do need to try to say some of these names because these people... It would be like showing you Citizen Kane without ever saying Orson Welles' name, you know? It's like, don't confuse the uh, comparison, but Stacy Waweru. I'm sorry if I'm ruining your name, sweetheart. You were so good in this movie. She plays Joe, who is the main character, who is a terminally ill girl. And the best thing, I'm, I'm going to just only touch on like the first five minutes because I know you haven't seen this movie and I refuse to spoil it for you. Um, her and her buddy are, are in, in the hospital. It's very clear that these are like uh, kids with cancer at the hospital. And they are having a conversation of who do you like more, Jet Li or Jackie Chan? And so then they ask the orderly, yo, who do you like more, Jet Li or Jackie Chan? And he's like, Bruce Lee. And so immediately I was like, I love this movie. <laughs> and she, dude, here's another thing for you. This movie is about a, a, a little girl superhero. This movie is about how her older sister wants to make her feel like a superhero. It's about how both of their mom is apprehensive about losing her baby girl. She's got a nine-year-old daughter who is not going to make it. And so they, they bring her from the hospital to home, right? And so you have these three different generational women in the same family who love each other to pieces and do so much for one another to show one another that they love each other. I'm going to get, I'm going to cry again just talking about this movie. The community in this movie, it's like you thought the, you thought It's a Wonderful Life was a nice uh, depiction of community. You ain't seen Supermoto. You just haven't. You thought Lars and the Real Girl was a good movie about community. You ain't seen Supermoto. And I know that you haven't seen Supermoto because like I said, ain't nobody fucking seen this movie. And I don't know why. So if you'll do me a favor, I'm, I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna end this now. We're not. I'm not gonna talk about the plot. If you wanna, if you if you see this movie, hit me up at Carson Higgins at Filmstruck Film Club. Hit me up. I want to talk to you about this movie, but I refuse to spoil anything because this movie is too short and too good. If I tell you one more thing about it, it's just gonna ruin it. You need to go in blind like I did. You can watch the trailer if you want, but just throw this movie on. It's shorter than two episodes of Bridgerton. All right, so watch this movie. 
And if you don't have Criterion Channel, then do me a favor. Do me a favor. On Amazon, buy this movie. It's $7.99. If that's too much, rent the movie. But buy this movie for $7.99. I'm going to buy it too. I haven't bought it yet. I'm going to buy this movie. Because it's only, you know, a couple years old. This movie came out in 2018. It was doing festival stuff in 2019. It's only 2021. So, like, people just haven't found this movie yet. But we're going to find it with them together. We're all going to do this together. It's a treasure hunt. You're going to watch this movie. You're going to tell me what you thought about it. We're going to talk about the details of the movie. And then you got to go tell everybody else that you know to go watch it, stream it on Criterion Channel, and rent and or buy it on Amazon. Because those that's the only places I've seen that it's available. But if it's available anywhere else, watch it. If you, if you have a Letterboxd account, put it in your watch list and then watch it and then review it. And if you have IMDb, rate this movie. Get this movie out there. More people must know about Supermoto and like Harry and Wanaina and Stacy Wawairu and Marion Nungo, who plays the mom. Holy shit, she's good. She's gonna win an Oscar someday. Um, I'm not, I can't get into it with you. I can't get into it with you, but you just have to trust me. You're watching this movie, you're gonna freak out and you're gonna tell me what you thought about it. I'm gonna stop talking. We're going to have another pick for you. We're doing one more Black History Month and then it's on to Women's uh, Month in March. Uh, And it's just going to, I'm just, I'm I'm telling you, man, as a 30 something year old guy watching a movie about a little girl who wants to be a superhero, I feel so empowered. So go watch it. Good night. Good day. Groot. Say good. Oh, he's bald now. See, we're just freaking out. Supermoto is too good. Um. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, One Fine Day Films in Germany for making sure that uh, African films are getting made and that African filmmakers are getting to work uh, on bigger sets, dealing with bigger stories. Um, Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love Supermoto. See ya.